The next two suburis, number four and five, uh, begins to deal with how do we move uh, forward and back when we start uh, uh, stepping and walking. Fourth suburi. We're doing shomenuchi and we are just coming forward on the steps. Fourth Saburi. It's me, son, he, go, rock, shit. Fourth Saburi. For Saburi is simple showman cut, straight up and down. Cutting straight showman. Synchronizing it with a step. Stepping one, two. Three, four, five. Step by step, slowly. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. What, what we don't want to do is come up and down, up and down. So this exercise is going to teach us how we move with the feet, with the legs. How do we step but we are not going to we're going to learn something new here we're not going to step onto the foot onto this foot and settle we are not going to come up on this foot step over and settle that takes time and is ultimately not that balanced so buri number four teaches us how to move forward and back we have to have a come down in our hip crease. We have to have 50-50 between the feet, the balance, and we want to have the pulley drawing, pulley feeling between the feet. So we are able to draw ourselves back and forth. So as I move forward, one. As I continue, I move, I draw myself forward for the second cut. I draw myself forward for the third cut. I swivel and cut. And I have the movement between the feet as I cut. Movement between the feet as I cut. Here, I swivel and cut. So that's the fast way of doing it instead of stepping and weight transferring. So we want to go away from weight transferring from one leg to the other and we want to find uh, uh, through a connected body, through a connected body system that we can pull and draw ourselves forward without uh, uh, losing any balance doing so. Uh, we have to come down in our hip crease and we have to employ the, the draw effect, the elastic draw effect we have across the pelvic arch connected with your center so as you move forward you're drawing yourself forward and by doing so you will be able to uh, cut as you place the foot if you're doing the stepping usually happens step happens first then the cut comes the step comes and then the cut the step comes and then the cut this is too late 
Uh, it's acceptable for a, for a beginner. Step count. Step count. Step count. Step step count. Step count. Step count. Step step count. That's the that's the fundamental basic uh, way of going about it. Step step. Step step. Step step. Step step. Step step. Step step. So it usually involves stepping, adjusting the back foot. S stepping, adjusting the back foot. Stepping and adjusting the back foot, meaning the sword cut comes down on the back foot. Turn and cut. Raise, step, cut. Raise, step, cut. And come down. We want to go from that to learn how to employ this. Starting from Ken Kamai, draw one, draw two, draw three. Now, instead of stepping, see if you can swivel on the ball of the foot and cut in one go. So instead of going one, and two, you're going to be here, and you're going to be more or less the the all the uh, movement initiated from under the ball of the foot. So as you come here, you're going to have a quick rotation, quick, and that can happen with the cut immediately. So you can go from here. You can begin the cut from here and cut here. Then. Have the move motion between the feet as you draw and cut. As you draw and cut. Now again, use the ball of the feet to rotate around. But don't do it in two motions. Don't do one and then two. The cut begins from here. So it becomes one cut from there. Now, So be able to move in one go using the whole body. So we don't want to lift the sword and then step and cut at the same time. We don't want to lift the sword and step and cut. We don't want to lift the sword and step and cut. We want to try to move the whole body from inception. So once we decide to go, everything goes. But in order to be able to do that, if you're disconnected, what happens is everything is, is, is not in sync. So you're going to be a little bit out of sync. And that's where the, the stepping goes wrong, timing goes wrong, and the difficulty arises once you want to uh, get it all together. <laughs> and, and you can see, if you simply try to uh, cut faster or synchronize it without understanding the connected body, you're going to have a hard time doing it. So what's most important here when you stand in Kamai is that you connect the body up and down from the top of your head to down to your feet. You're pulling down into your feet, you're pulling up to your head and as you, you connect the whole body together, you will spring out of one place. So everything springs together. The arms are connected, they are full, so when you go, everything goes together. Everything moves 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 together.
On the fourth suburi, when we begin to move forward, and likewise when we uh, on the fifth suburi, as we are moving forward, the difficulty uh, of moving with speed becomes evident. Um, uh, and traditionally, you might have seen this. Uh, without the understanding of a connected body and the understanding of being able to move, uh, as a connected and pulling way, if we move in the in the in maybe what I would say in the more common way of uh, how I was taught also, simply by stepping, stepping, and stepping, that might be fine as long as we are moving relatively slow. But the moment we start moving fast and we don't understand the elasticity and the strength of a connected body uh, in order to move the feet one two uh, it becomes difficult because stepping two steps takes a lot of time so if i have to do it fast and begin to move even faster in order to move my feet, they become a little bit jumpy. And you might have seen this because instead of being smooth, you might see this because it's a disconnected body and you, by, by, by necessity, the body has to be able to connect somehow in order to produce some power, then you might see this. And it become a jumping, uh, jumping effect simply because you're needing to move the feet and legs faster, but there's no internal understanding of a connected body. So mechanically, you have to start moving your body and it becomes this jumpy kind of uh, sequence that you might see uh, uh, some styles display. And I would, uh, sometimes I call it bad Iwama style because I'm not a subscriber of this kind of uh, movement uh, because I think it's based on a wrong understanding uh, and lack of understanding of a connected body where you would simply use a different way of moving between the feet. You would, instead of stepping, or jumping, you would begin to understand the connected elastic strength of a moving body. Just a small word because I think it needs to be said that uh, <coughs> uh, that has to be exemplified and uh, so you can see the difference in, in when you see different people practicing and you can understand the difference as well. <laughs>